The film Wolfwalkers transports us to Kilkenny, Ireland during the middle of the 17th century, where the fictionalized version of Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell has ordered the town's residents to massacre the wolves in the nearby woods. The hunter, Goodfellow, accompanied by his wannabe hunter daughter Robin, has been sent to Kilkenny to lead the wild animals' extermination. To prove her hunting qualities, Robin follows her father into the wilderness and meets the wolf walker Mev, a girl who becomes a wolf when asleep. Historically, in 1650, Kilkenny was obtained by the parliamentarian Cromwell as part of his quest to extinguish the Irish support for the dethroned Stuarts. The primary weapon against wolves at the time was the Irish wolfhound the famed guardian wolf dog that was held in such high regard as to be frequently sent abroad as a present to foreign leaders. However, due to the significant increase of wolves in some parts of Ireland, such as in the present-day county Kilkenny, the wolf dog services were required more than ever and in 1652 Oliver Cromwell passed a law to prohibit their exportation in order to deal with, as various sources call it, the wolf plague in Ireland. Mythologically, the idea that humans shapeshift into wolves is inspired by the myth in Irish folklore called Werewolves of Ossory. Ossory was a former Irish kingdom located in a huge part of modern-day County Kilkenny. It was believed that the residents of Ossory can shift into wolves while sustaining the sanity of a human. They were the descendants of the mythological figure Lake Neck Feylad, whose tribe of warriors was clothed in wolf skins, and when a battle was on the cards, they would become wolfishly ferocious and ruthless. Wolfwalkers utilizes Irish history and folklore to construct an environmentalist message in the modern day. Cromo's character is a cynic dog for all the people in power who annihilate animals and everything else that's natural for their countries and their own benefit. And the wolf walker Mev, as a human shapeshifting into a wolf, puts the viewer into the wolf's point of view so one can grasp how important it is that the wolf's beautiful home, the wild forest, isn't cleared and people can't exploit their goods through deforestation. Because as research shows, water quantity and quality, to say the least, are sensitive to changes in tree cover and forest management. Therefore, with its opulent artisan drawings, Wolf Walkers contrast the inhospitable town of Kilkenny, crafted as two-dimensional, and the vibrant woods where the human and the wolf can become best friends. And this oppositional pair elevates the message quite forthrightly, leave the forest and its inhabitants alone. However, the ultimate hierarchical position of the main characters at the end of the film presents, let's call it, a slight hypocrisy. The Wolfwalkers neutralize the human anti-environmentalist evil, Cromo's character. But instead of leaving the wolves alone, the Wolfwalkers use their humanness to lead the wolf back. Let's check out the film structure. We know that Cromo has commanded the residents of the town of Kilkenny to clear the nearby forests from the wolves. To prove her hunting qualities, Robin tries to kill some wolves, but shoots her falcon instead. Then, Mev calls the wolves back, heals the falcon, and while trying to free Robin from a wolf trap, Mev bites her hand. After befriending Mev and comprehending what a wolf walker is, Robin learns that Mev's mother hasn't been in her human form for a long time, since her wolf spirit hasn't yet returned from her search of a new home for the pack. Then, during the night, Robin realizes Mev's bite has transformed her into a wolf walker, and she meets Mev in the woods to learn more about her new form. Towards the end, Mev's mother bites Goodfellow. Then, Robin frees her from Cromo's cage and reunites her with Mev. Goodfellow shoots Mev's mother with an arrow, and the mother returns to her human form. As Mev tries to heal her mother's wolf spirit, Robin and the wolf pack stole the soldiers. Then, Robin is injured, and her father's bite triggers his wolf form, and he saves her from Cromwell. Thereafter, all of the wolves help Mev revive her mother, and the four half-human, half-wolf creatures lead the wolf pack to their new home. The film's ending might seem like a happy ending for the wolves. Cromo and his authoritarian rule have been neutralized, and the wolves are free. But actually, they aren't, because the human variable has never left, and it still governs the wolves. When Mev teaches Robin how to be a wolf walker, she and the song's lyrics together say, We are stronger now, can run really fast, and jump so high. Hence, Mev is talking from the perspective of a human who's become more powerful now. She thinks it's fine, morally, to have the best of both worlds, but if we follow the environmentalist logic, it's not. Because if the humans and the wolves don't live in their separate locations, the human, as the more rational out of the two, would always end up the leader. Something similar happens during the highest grossing movie of all time, Avatar. 
In the world of Avatar, much of the Earth's forests and wildlife have been obliterated due to substantial urbanization and deforestation. And humans travel to the moon called Pandora to obtain precious minerals in order to counter the Earth's lack of natural resources. The main target is the so-called home tree, the gathering place of some of Pandora's inhabitants, because below it, there's the richest deposit of the minerals. Realizing how terrible the whole operation is, the main character Jake decides to side with the natives and becomes a member of their tribe. So far this manifests a genuine environmentalist message, because if you really care about nature and its inhabitants, you have to join them, adhere to their rules and fight for their self-governance by their side. But the film doesn't stop there. Jake decides to utilize his rational humanness to find a way to become the leader of the tribe. Even though he is not fully knowledgeable about the tribe's customs, the natives start deeming him a god because of their customs. Hence, Jake ends up at the top of the tribe's hierarchy because he is farsighted and knows how to gain power, so he can lead the tribe into battle against the oppressor in his way, the human way. So, in the end, it's not the purity of nature that prevails. The winner is again the human leader, ruling over more primitive creatures. For the wild animals to be really free, the four wolf walkers could do two things. They either help the wolves get their home back, so the animal's wildness isn't hindered and the wolf walkers are living as humans in the town of Kilkenny, or they join the wolf pack, abstain from their humanness and remain wolves for the rest of their life. Because being both a human and a wolf will always put them at the top of the wolf hierarchy and hence the wolves will always be controlled. In the same way Mev's mother's human body was unconscious because her wolf body was caged, the four wolf walkers could leave their human bodies and follow the wolf pack, not rule over it, wherever their wild and unpredictable spirit leads them. Wild animals are wild because they are untamed and they live on their own without the people's help. If one happens to be a hybrid between a human and a wolf, or a human and a blue-skinned humanoid and really wants to be helpful, they have to choose one of the two forms. Because if they don't, they will always end up dominating a species that naturally requires its self-governance.